lowering the shoulder. Swing and a miss. McGinley scores! And uh, it's going to be a challenge for us. I mean, they're a really talented football team. I think everybody knows that. Four wide receivers. Pressure steps up. Marshall wants to run again. Cuts down the middle of the field. All alone. Touchdown, Warriors! What a cut. Well, it's gray and rainy outside, so come on inside with us to Renaissance High School and warm up with day two of the PSL Holiday Classic. We've got three really good games coming up, and we kick it off with Southeastern High from here in Detroit against Robichaud from Dearborn Heights. Evan Stockton with you alongside the rest of our great crew. We've got Sam Day alongside all day. And stick the theme of this game is honestly the theme of the entire day. We've got six teams that are all above 500, six teams that are experienced, six teams that have high hopes and want to get to the Breslin Center. And today we start with Southeastern and Robichaud. Feels like we're going to learn a lot about these two teams and all the teams we're covering today. Yeah, whenever you have matchups like this, you're always looking for that one guy that's going to raise his team above the rest. And that's really what we get to look forward to in this first game. You know, for Robichaud, is it going to be Marcus Petway, who's a senior, has kind of led the way for his team. Then you look over at uh, Southeastern. I like the guy Evans, number 24. He's very raw. You don't know what you're going to get. And those guys tend to have a, a, an opportunity to do something special in games like this. And the unique thing about these two teams, is the fact that they have a lot of guys coming back. Southeastern has all five starters back from last year's team, a team that won a playoff game in Division Two. And for Robichaud, they've got a couple of starters back and four overall rotation guys back from their team last year, Stick. So, again, it's going to be interesting to see how this game plays out, how all the games play out today. Very good opportunity for us to learn a lot about all the players and teams out on that floor all day long here at Renaissance High. Yeah, really looking forward to see how each one of these teams attack each other right off. Like you were saying, I think we're going to learn a lot, especially here in the first quarter, just how prepared they are, and you get a look at the starting lineups. Here's your starting five for Southeastern. All of them back, including Evans, who just lost the tap, and a block on the other end of the floor for Southeastern. Caldwell, Harden, Mitchell, Evans, and Carney, the starting five for the Jungleers, who come in at four and two. And the Bulldogs of Robichaud coming in at four and one. Yeah, that was Carney with the excellent recovery block there. And now they're attacking the zone. Little 3-2 zone for Robichaud. Do we like the decision to go zone this early in the game? Well, it worked out on the first trip, I guess. This is Walker coming down the lane, and he got fouled on the way up. Yeah, that's interesting, like you were saying. Is it, is it good to go zone that early? And I think in these types of games, that's what you want to do. You want to make your opponent kind of feel you out and kind of understand where they need to attack. Then switch it up on them. Here you get a good look at the take and the nice shot heading to the line. Love that lefty stroke. All right, Stick, let's play a fun little guessing game for you 30 seconds into this game. Oh, boy. The guy at the free throw line, Walker, played on the football team. Remember, he's kind of tall. What position do you think he played on the football team? A wide receiver? Bingo! Hey! How about that? One for one on the day. Let's keep a running tally of all the trivia questions I ask. By the way, are these Jungleers jerseys white or light gray? I can't really tell. They are silverish. Yeah, there. Another there we go. steal. Another steal. Petway the steal. Petway the drive and the finish. Strong start for the Bulldogs. Yeah, and that's the guy we talked about in the pregame. You could just tell he's got that big physical build, under control, balanced, able to take the contact and take it to the rim, get to a 4 0 lead. Trying to get it in the middle of that zone. Carney passed it out to Keyshawn Harden. Caldwell's three was blocked. Still Southeastern basketball, not anymore. They just turned it over. Yeah, well, that was another big block by Walker there. And you're, you're just talking about his size and his length. And that's the thing, in a zone like that, if you've got a guy that can close out on those jump shots, it makes it even harder, especially on this condensed high school court. Stick, we got our first sub of the game for Southeastern. Evans comes out, and a guy you may remember, Julian Liddell, is in number three, quarterback on the football team. And that would explain why he's kind of a pass-first uh, player on basketball court as well. Exciting player to watch. Another foul physical collision on the play. 
first game out of three today, by the way, Stick. We got Redford Union against Western in game two, and then the home team, Renaissance hosts Roseville in the nightcap. No good on the attempt down low for Walker, southeastern rebound. Liddell off the bench, driving and kicking. Harden missed the three, and Walker a big boy rebound. Yeah, but that was the first real good possession by Southeastern. They were able to get the ball into the hoop and then kick it out for a nice three-point shot. Obviously didn't go down, but still a good possession. Walker falling away, a little bit short. Yeah, you can tell Walker's size is just so much bigger than anybody on the court right now. What does Southeastern need to do here to start cracking this Robichaud zone, you think? Well, like I said, they did it on their last possession. Get into the lane like this, make the defenders crash in, and then you'll get your open shots. But, I mean, the closing ability by Walker, he's been a one-man show here for the first five minutes of this game. Back inside that zone with Liddell. Kick ball out of bounds. Not only is it the zone that's causing problems, but that length of yeah. Robichaud. They got long extender arms in there, it looks like. Well, and if you notice, they're not staying in their like specific spots when they start the zone. Sometimes Walker's over here, sometimes he's up on the top. It just matters where they switch. So it's like a switching zone. Petway drive, missed shot. Still loose along the baseline, and the jungleers come out with it. Still trying to score. Oh, a block for Walker. Liddell, Southeastern on the board. Walker having himself a game so far. I think that's his second block already. And we're getting to see some of these players in action. Big shot right there. Julian Liddell putting three on the board. What rhymes with great? Participate. Where does greatness start? Here, in the classroom. On the diamond. In the pool. On the field. Where will your greatness take you? To better grades. To more friends. Yeah! Be great. Participate! <laughs> McGinley scores! The length of Robichaud has given Southeastern problems. Length in the zone is leading to a bunch of blocks and a bunch of contested shots. Although, Stick, the good news for Southeastern is they're only down by one point, a couple of minutes in, because their defense as well has done a nice job giving Robichaud some issues offensively as well. Yeah, it's interesting because they are undersized how they have to play defense. A, a couple of times they backed off the contact when you thought Robichaud was expecting it, and that's what's caused them to miss some easy field goals. Jungleers hoping to take their first lead of the game. This will help. <laughs> Liddell got inside that zone, and then Tolliver literally fell on it. I mean, if you're going to commit a foul, that's what you do, right? <laughs> There's no questioning if that should have been called or not. It'll be a baseline out of bounds here for Julian Liddell, who just did that three couple of seconds ago. Tough to miss him with the purple shoes. Amazing shoes. Caldwell just traveled. If we get a, <laughs> if we get a second here, yeah, let, let's get a look at Julian Liddell, number three's purple shoes. I just, I think it's a great look on multiple levels, but most importantly, it's because it actually matches the jersey, you know? That may be the only guy in here with better shoes than you. Thank you. So you came out with the Santa Air Forces. Is that what those are? That's not the official name, <laughs> but I'm just going to call them the Santa Air Forces now. The Air Maxes. Thank you. Another foul on Southeastern. Yeah, Walker has just been an issue on both ends during this game. He seems to be Mr. Do Everything right now for Robichaud. They're going to him on the offensive end. He's initiating it too. Dribbling point up at the top. Impressive so far. Petway, fall away, Jay. Liddell, rebound. He's really impacted the game since he's come in for Southeastern. Yeah, I mean, they put up their only points since he got in, so it's, it's tough to say where they'd be without him. There's that zone again. 
Carney way out away from the basket as Southeastern still can't get it inside the zone. Pass was tipped that length again. And with them coming out in the zone so early, it just says one thing to me, that they, they don't believe Southeastern has the shooters to beat them. And to me, that's usually what you do when you're in the zone and you don't believe the other team can shoot. Liddell, nice little shot fake. Now driving baseline for a dump off, and Carney gives the Jungleers their first lead today. But that's exactly how you beat a zone. You get into the lane and find the easy dump off, now with a quick press. And oh, by the way, they bit on the shot fake from Liddell, who had made that earlier three. Offensive rebound, Clay, reload for Robichaud. Headway waiting for the curling Walker. Javon Walker step back, long range two is good. Ooh, what a nasty shot. I was gonna say, I was hoping he'd use his size advantage and post up there, but if you got a fadeaway jumper like that in the arsenal, use it. Stick, that's one of those shots where you're watching him take it and go, why are you shooting that? Okay, you made it, that, sure. That's exactly what was going on in my head. Offensive rebound, Goodwin, kick Liddell. Didn't make that three. Bulldogs back in front. Traded the lead a couple of times in this first quarter. Lead larger for Robichaud, knocked down from the corner for Clay. Not much arc on that jump shot. Gotta remind you of Sean Marion back in the day, just a flat jumper from the corner. Stick, you know Deron Clay is gonna watch back this broadcast and here you go. Wow, they compared me to the Matrix? That's <laughs> no. awesome. No, he's gonna say, who the hell is Sean Marion? Yeah, you're, pro you're probably right, you're probably right. He just fouled Julian Liddell. Does that mean that we're both getting old, that people have no idea? Hopefully they know how good those Suns teams were. Oh, Marion uh, and Nash and Stoudemire. Stoudemire, yeah, those were some great teams. You can look, there's some nice arc on that shot, but the foul makes a miss it going to the line. Number three. One more coming for Liddell. He's the floor general of the team, according to head coach Anthony Passero. Well, you brought it up. I mean, the total pace of this game had changed as soon as he came in, and that's part of his facilitating, and that's just part of how he is on the floor getting other teammates involved. It's a busy stat line for Julian Liddell this year. Six points per game, four rebounds, two assists, two steals. Right time off the floor, Robichaud real quick, and Petway lays it in for two. That way is so smooth. He just looks like one of those guys that's always in control, always balanced. Bulldogs growing the lead a little bit here. Open look for Carney. Big shot for Southeastern. Baseball pass ahead. Robichaud breaks that press. And a tough roll off for Walker. He got his miss, though, and put it back up and in. And you've seen it the past couple times up the court for Robichaud getting in this little half court trap. Southeastern's been able to make them pay though by making some shots, so you see they're not gonna do it here. Evans coming up to set the screen. Liddell wanted a little bit of help, and then he drew a foul on Walker. Southeastern will take that all day. Fouls on number one in black and red. <laughs> that seems to be the guy you want to target right now. And, but once again, how do you beat that zone? You attack, 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 trying to get to the rim, making that zone collapse. And that's exactly what's been going on since Liddell got in the game. Now they're in a man. Carney breaks the man, gets to the rim, finger rolls at home, and he's off to the free throw line. <laughs> it's almost like they took a breath of relief because they didn't see a zone in front. It was like, all right, man, I can take you one on one. And look at this, above the rim, that ball doesn't slip out of his hands. He's throwing that home. Man, there is some uh, raw athleticism to Lozell Carney's game. He's listed at 6'5", 160. I believe that. He's a long and lanky dude, but he just showed a really nice ability to get to the rim. That was cool. Yeah, those long, lanky guys are always sneaky strong, too. Now, you remember playing against them, you're like, all right, I can push this skinny guy around. Nope. Walker, another skinny guy. 
misses the three, and the carom on the rebound actually went out of bounds. Had a sub for Southeastern as well, number 10. Hayden Stein is in, the junior. Harden's been in since the beginning. Now here's Carney. He was looking for Harden, who wasn't looking for the pass. <laughs> and now we have some sloppy play on the other one. That was an interesting defensive possession. It looked like they were starting out in man, then they tried to switch the zone. Luckily for them, the pass was not looked for by the cutter. Final minute of the first quarter. Arba shot is led for much of the quarter, but the Jungleers are in this thing. Walker step back again, this time in and out. Stein's got the rebound. And I really just don't love those possessions out of Walker. You see him, you see his athleticism, you see how big he is. Anybody can dribble at the top of the key and shoot a three-pointer. Not everybody can be as big and long as you. Go use that length. Let's see if Southeastern plays for the final shot of the quarter here. Switched Harden. up the zone. Yeah, they did. Harden almost lost that ball. Liddell found a little space. Walker rebounded the miss. Got to go quick. There's three seconds. Walker got it off. Almost banked it in. Off to the second quarter we go. Javon Walker led all Robichaud scores with six in the first quarter. Carney had seven for Southeastern. Good ball game brewing at Renaissance High. Lowering the shoulder. Swing and a miss. McGinley scores! And uh, it's going to be a challenge for us. I mean, they're a really talented football team. I think everybody knows that. Four wide receivers. Pressure steps up. Marshall wants to run again. Cuts down the middle of the field. All alone. Touchdown, Warriors! What a cut. Robichaud coming in with a strong record this year. Jermaine Carter has been coaching the club for nearly a decade. Some great history for Robichaud. It, it kind of feels like, Stick, they're building to something even better this year. They won a couple of playoff games last year. They went 18-7 and seven last season, 18-5 and five the year before that. Good start this season. And we're, we're seeing early in this game why clearly they're going to cause problems for a lot of teams. That length in that zone, it's a bit of a Rubik's Cube for anybody that they're gonna play all year. Yeah, they're throwing different zones at you. We saw a 3-2 to start, and then they switched to a 2-3 right before the end of the first quarter there. And they also switched to man, so they're making you think out on the court. Liddell, drive to the basket, there he is again. Javon Walker said, yeah, don't try that again. Oh my goodness. And that's intimidating, you know? When you drive to the rim like this and it gets swatted back onto your head, you're gonna think twice about going to the hole. They'll try a three from the corner instead. Caldwell airballed it. Offensive rebound, Stein. My goodness, was that an emphatic block? Three from a mile away, Harden missed it. Another offensive rebound. And that's a problem in the zone sometimes. That's what I was just gonna say. That's where the zone is susceptible because you don't have a singular man to box out. Caldwell traveled, so they get three cracks at it and nothing. But three good cracks at it, you right. know? They, they at least got some decent shots that time and, you know, going to the hoop and getting rejected like that by Walker on the first try. At least they tried again. Robichaud has pretty much led since the beginning of this basketball game. Largest lead was six. Walker on the take again. Offensive rebound for Robichaud this time. I like that take by Walker, though. I just like to see him use the glass on that. Petway sizing it up, driving and kicking. Walker, fall away, Jay. You know, he's tried that exact shot, I think, five times, but he's only made it once today. Yeah, you, you know he'll find his rhythm eventually. But yeah, with all that size, I'd love to see him go to the hoop. Liddell tried a three that was not close. Couple of subs here for the Jungleers. Stein is out, so is Goodwin. Mitchell, the senior, number four, coming back in as Goodwin sits. Another senior. 
lot of returners on this Jungleers team. They played in the PSL Holiday Classic here at Renaissance last year. Walker stepped through and a block. Carney blocks Walker. Yeah, that's the matchup you want to see, Carney versus Walker. Two long athletic guys going at work. There are a couple of those guys where you, you look and you go, you're not 17 years old. <laughs> right. Dude, you're not that old. A couple turnovers by the Jungleers here. Let's see if Robichaud can take advantage. Pet wave floater. They did just take advantage. And Southeast are going to burn a timeout. We'll take it with them. A couple of minutes into the second quarter. Robichaud off to a slim lead at the start of the second quarter off that nice little folder for Marcus Petway. Take a look at us right now. We are everything that will be. We are an engine of progress that has been forged by generations, driven by the knowledge that each student in every classroom has the potential to be their best self and inspire us all. We are teachers, parents, families, all ready to do our part. We know when students rise, we all rise. We are Detroit Public Schools Community District. Lowering the shoulder. Swing and a miss. McGinley scores. Robichaud from down the road in Dearborn Heights is coming to Renaissance High and they're looking pretty good so far. 15 to 12 lead over the Southeastern Jungleers. In case you're wondering about the nickname for Southeastern, I remember calling them last year and stick, I, I never actually did any research. I didn't do my job and I looked up why the nickname is Jungleers. They founded the high school in 1917, so over a century ago. When they built the high school, it was so far from the middle of Detroit at the time, they considered it, quote unquote, out in the jungle. So that's why the nickname is the Jungleers, because apparently they were so far from Detroit, they were out in the jungle. <laughs> and what year was this? 1917. Well, yeah, Detroit was a different landscape back then. Yeah. Like any big city, it's an ever-changing ecosystem. Harden made it on one end for Southeastern, and he just got the rebound on the other end. How about that? Good basketball history at Southeastern. Made the state title in 2011 and 2013. Obviously, the basketball history in this city is, is so rich. Any school you look at, great players, great programs, great tradition. Of course, Cass Tech won the Division I state championship last year. King has had some good teams in recent times. Yeah, Pershing, but, Southeastern, of course, Renaissance, where we are all day. I see a name up there on the Renaissance, Ricky Paulding. That was when I was in high school. He was That guy could jump out of the gym. He was an amazing athlete. In recent times, too, Justin Turner, who had a great career at Bowling Green, went here to Renaissance, former member of the Motor City Crews. Caldwell. Adele tipped the rebound, and it got saved by Mitchell. Carney, turnaround jumper, no. And a foul on Mitchell. After the early struggles against the zone for Southeastern Stick, how do you think they're doing now against that Robichaud zone? I think about the same. I mean, you can tell they really haven't quite figured it out, but they really haven't gotten on a streak where they're knocking down shots either. But I'm telling you, they, Robichaud has done a great job of switching it up because you saw a switching man coverage on that last possession. You saw a 2-3 zone, a 3-2 zone. So it's tough to get comfortable and find your rhythm when it's constantly different. Headway. Man, the rims here at Renaissance are tough. Yeah. And Kearney, give credit to Kearney. I mean, he has been protecting that rim. He's got a couple block shots on the day. So when you see him down there low, it's going to be tough to make that layup. Liddell for Caldwell. Double for Kearney from that zone. He passed out of it. See, and they have a baseline cutter, but he's not really looking for the ball. If they get a sharp pass to that baseline cutter, they could have easy layups against this zone. There's your cutter, Carney. Liddell was forced to throw it off Walker's foot because <laughs> he was trapped in the corner. That's a smart play. I mean, yeah, it is a smart play, a heads-up play. You, you can realize that possession was kind of slowly grinding to a halt. So you know what? Throw it off the defender, and let's start again. 
Liddell will inbound it on a possession for Southeastern that's taken 30 seconds, and now it's going to take even longer because on the inbound, Tolliver just kicked the ball. Wrong sport, my friend. <laughs> Robichaud, the, the, they just do a good job of getting and mucking it up. You know, they're everywhere. It seems like there's six guys on the court for them. Caldwell long. Carney rebound got tapped to Goodwin, who fell to the floor and was tied up by Clay. The possession arrow gives it back to Robichaud. And with all that being said, you could tell that Southeastern isn't in rhythm. They're not playing well, and they're only down one point. So they got to feel good about that. But at the same time, it's got to be frustrating not to get into any rhythm whatsoever. Clay wants a little movement on this trip for Robichaud. Now down low to Petway. Like the size advantage, missed the shot. The follow wasn't good. Walker got it again, threw it up. And he was fouled as he threw it up. But that's where they have their major advantage, down there in the paint. I mean, you can see it when everybody's just standing next to each other, that Robichaud definitely has the size advantage right now. And they need to start using it. Quit settling for jump shots. Get down there and muck it up. One more coming for Walker. He just mucked it up, got a foul, and off to the line he goes. Keeping track of how many times I say muck it up. <laughs> I, I think it's great. I mean, you should keep using it. I mean, we, we didn't set a line or anything, so say it as much as you want. You're not going to dirty the waters. Well, I just realized I uh, said it twice. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> Moss, the steal. Malachi Moss, no. Back to the line he goes, though. You like that take by Malachi, though. Nice little sidestep, able to get his way to the rim and find himself at the free throw line, which is where Robichaud's done a lot of their damage is at the free throw line. Look at that Euro step going through. Just got to finish the job. It is kind of wild, right? You watch any level of basketball, high school, college, pro, whatever. The Euro step until 10, 12 years ago, that was exclusively the domain of Dirk Nowitzki. Now everybody does it. Well, yeah, because it used to be called traveling. <laughs> as soon as they stopped calling it traveling, everybody could use it. Stick, are you saying that sometimes in professional basketball they don't call traveling as much as the other <laughs> levels? Is that what you're telling me? I'm saying basketball has evolved a lot since you could just dribble the ball from the top. <laughs> and that is the truest thing that he'll say all day. Yeah. That's a travel on Southeast. I'm not saying good or bad, just evolved. That's the way the game has come about. Hey, in football they used to run it about 80% of the time and throw it 20. Now they throw it about 80% of the time and run it 20. Sports, like life, is an ever-changing ecosystem. Ever-evolving. Walker split a couple of defenders, and that lanky lefty about to go back to the free throw line. And I love that play call. You get him circling around that screen, getting all his momentum going towards the hoop, and who's going to stop this guy on the court? Look at him fly through the air. And being a lefty, it's so awkward that he can put it up that way and that strong. You're not used to defending it. It is kind of funny watching these long and lanky guys like Walker. I mean this in the nicest way possible. They remind me of baby giraffes sometimes because baby giraffes are still figuring out those long limbs. <laughs> when you get a player with the athleticism and size of Walker who knows how to use it, it really is devastating. It is, and that, I mean, that's the difference. There are a lot of tall people on the planet, but not a lot of them can put that athletic prowess together. There it is again on display. Right on cue, Walker the steal and the finish over Liddell. Yeah, I mean, what a play right there. Not only does he step into the passing lane, get the steal, walks the tightrope, keeps it in bounds, and finishes over a defender. Jungleers need a bucket in the worst way here. It's getting away from him. Moss the steal, Moss the finish. 10-point lead, Robichaud, and a Southeastern timeout. Largest lead of the game for the Bulldogs. Pulling away from the Jungleers. Down the stretch in the first half. The innocence of youth. Is there anything any better? But soon they'll be in high school and facing all the same challenges you faced. How to make friends. How to fit in. How to be cool. We want our children to have everything they'll need to live fulfilling and productive lives. Make sure the kids in your family are among the more than 300,000 participants here in Michigan 
who take part in high school sports. Lowering the shoulder. Swing and a miss. McGinley scores! Robichaud is rolling. Last couple of minutes, they have taken this from a one-point lead to a 10-point lead. Stick, why is Robichaud growing the lean like this right now? I mean, they've been just getting baskets and basket off of turnovers like this. <laughs> Here we go. Walker for two more. Javon Walker has 14 points already. Yeah, to me, Southeastern is just thinking too much. You've seen them have a couple open jumpers, but they're waiting for the defense to close on them. You just got to catch and shoot against the zone like this. Harden had it stolen briefly by Walker. I think his backside may have been out of bounds as he touched the ball. But still, again, exactly to your point. Right now, Southeastern is just all sorts of confused. All sorts of confused and all sorts of lack in effort. You just saw Walker track that ball down when he had to go to the half court, and the player for Southeastern only had to go maybe a quarter court. You can just tell they are locked in right now. Robichaud is swarming all over the floor. Finally, Southeastern an answer, plus one for Azaranta Evans. But look how fast they were moving the ball there. Nobody dribbled it too long. They got it, passed it to the next man, and that's how you're able to get these open looks. And this is the guy I think is going to be a wild card in this game because he can get it going at any time, and he's got the size and strength to match up with anybody. Yeah, Evans is listed at 6'5", 205. He looks it. That's a big body down there. He's a big boy. And they say he's very raw, but that doesn't mean bad, you know? Just a sophomore, too. You know he's going to get better. That time, he had Walker take it away from him. Senior just stealing it from a sophomore. Well, Walker's feeling it right now. I mean, he just went coast to coast, not worrying about the defense at all. Took on three defenders and scored the hoop. Back up to a 12-point lead. See, this is where they get in trouble, just holding the basketball, letting the defense adjust their zone. Catch it, pass it, catch it, pass it. Evans came up to set a screen for Liddell. Caldwell driving, he did give it up, but he stepped out of bounds. But you like that possession, at least they're attacking the hoop, and that was going to be an easy layup had he not stepped out of bounds. I like that possession a lot better once they got going. Because you got to start swinging the ball against the zone. You got to get the zone to move. Final sub here for Southeastern. They took Caldwell off the floor. Let's see how Robichaud attacks it. Under a minute to go in a first half that they have controlled basically since we started it. Pedway three. Rebound off of Robichaud. Southeastern ball. I'm a fan of Petway's shot and just the way he looks while he's playing basketball. I've talked about it a couple times. Just so smooth, balanced. Like, that's the shot you want and what you coach. Hard to find a lot of fault with the way that Robichaud has played in this first half. I'm sure their head coach, Jermaine Carter, will get the boys in the locker room at halftime and find a couple of things. But overall, they have looked really good. Yeah, especially here in the second quarter. What have they allowed, two or four points? Something like that. I'd ask Pat the stat, but apparently he took the day off. He's not here. He's watching from home. I would hope so. Maybe he'll text into the program. Actually, don't text into the program. The, uh, the service inside Renaissance High, not great. Probably won't get your text. Oh, that's a foul on Petway. He lowered his shoulder into Liddell. Going for that steal, and that's what I like. I mean, that's what you like about Robeshot. Even though they're up right now, 12 points about to go into halftime, they're reaching for steals. They're going for it. The aggressive nature of that Robichaud defense has definitely been on display in the first half. Southeastern got to go. Five in the ticker. Liddell driving, kicking, Carney shooting, missing. And that is two quarters of basketball on a full day of it from Renaissance High School. Robichaud has pretty much led since we started this thing. Javon Walker, the star of stars. 16 points for number one in black and red and a 12-point lead for the Bulldogs at recess.
an ordinary idea comes a great journey. It all starts with the simple thought, a vision of something bigger, greater than what already exists. It's that spark that ignites the passion and drive to create something truly amazing. At G-Brand, we understand this journey well. We take pride in the details and perfecting every aspect of the process, regardless of how small or big they may be. Because it's more than just a design or a shirt. It's about outfitting future champions. There's something to be said about a team coming together, each member contributing their unique skills, talents, and ideas. It's that collective effort that takes a simple idea and turns it into something truly great. The process can be excruciating, with countless hours spent tirelessly reviewing every detail. But the end result is pure and so rewarding, knowing that we've created something that will inspire greatness in those who wear it. Whether they come from a savage land or a booming metropolis, whether their numbers are two or two billion, the greatest their numbers could ever become is truly to become one. That's why at G-Brand, we're more than just a clothing company. We're a movement, a community of like-minded individuals who believe in the power of coming together to make a difference. So join us on this journey as we strive to outfit future champions and inspire greatness in all that we do. G-Brand, now that's game. Take two, Mark. I guess. <laughs> I go like this. <laughs> the best part about playing football in Texas has to be the reaction from the community. I want to encourage others to play volleyball or choir because you get to experience new things and do stuff that you've never done before. My reason why is passion. My reason why is pride. Hi folks, Dr. Joe here again with Michigan Orthopedic Surgeons. Did you know that kids are not little adults when it comes to sports injuries? That's because of something called the growth plate. Growth plates exist all over the human body in our growing athletes. They're actually little cartilage discs that exist at the end of all the long bones. It's simply where a kid grows. The problem is that the growth plate can be the weak link. What might be a sprain, a strain, or a tear in an adult when they hurt themselves can actually be a growth plate fracture in a kid. So it's important if your kid has hurt themselves and they're not using their arm or they're not able to put weight on a leg, come see one of us, get an x-ray, and make sure it's not a growth plate fracture. For more information, go to miorthosurgeons.com.
As the voice of Michigan's student athletes, the Student Advisory Council's role is to convey the message of how high school sports should be played. We are responsible for helping the MHSAA maintain a positive and healthy atmosphere in which interscholastic athletes can thrive. We believe that athletes should be competitive, sportsmanlike, and excel academically. We believe that students in the stands should have fun, but not take away the focus from the game. We believe coaches should act like teachers, helping student athletes develop while still keeping high school sports in perspective. We believe that parents should always be positive role models and support their child's decisions. We believe officials commit their own time to high school sports. And respect should always be shown and given to them. The most important goal for student athletes is to enjoy high school sports while keeping a high level of respect between all those involved in the games. Enjoy, 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 enjoy the, the game. game. Take a look at us right now. We are everything that will be. We are an engine of progress that has been forged by generations driven by the knowledge that each student in every classroom has the potential to be their best self and inspire us all. We are teachers, parents, families, all ready to do our part. We know when students rise, we all rise. We are Detroit Public Schools Community District. We are the MHSAA, a collection of 750 high schools and 750 middle schools. From Temperance to Copper Harbor, from New Buffalo to Alpena, each year more than a quarter of a million students play one of our 28 sports. More than one and a half million fans attend our postseason games. There are 30,000 coaches and 8,000 officials, not to mention all of the volunteers. The MHSAA believes in the four S's. School sports should be safe and kept in the appropriate scope we believe nothing beats great sportsmanship and that scholarship in the classroom is more important than excellence on the field or court. Most of all, we believe school sports should be fun. So come out and join us at a game. Support your school, support your community, and come see what the excitement is all about. Hi folks, Dr. Joe here again with Michigan Orthopedic Surgeons. Everywhere you look this time of year, people are running. And that's a great thing because running is an excellent exercise, especially for your cardiovascular and musculoskeletal systems. But the question is, are you running a safe running program? All too often, people are hobbled by things like shin splints and patellar tendonitis. But luckily, simple things like stretching and warm up, the right running shoes, and realistic weekly mileages can keep you in your running game. For more information, go to miorthosurgeons.com. There's just one place where students are students first, and athletics are played with purpose and perspective. That place is your local high school. High school sports offer more than the joy of competition. Studies show that student athletes are also likely to enjoy greater levels of achievement in other areas of their lives, including academics. High school sports, a winning part of a complete education. Lowering the shoulder. Swing and a miss. McGinley scores! And uh, it's going to be a challenge for us. I mean, they're a really talented football team. I think everybody knows that. Four wide receivers. Pressure steps up. Marshall wants to run again. Cuts down the middle of the field. All alone. Touchdown, Warriors! What a cut. Hey, welcome back. First game out of three today. In the second day of the PSL Holiday Classic, we have moved venues. We were at Cast Tech yesterday. We're at Renaissance today. One half in to our first game. Roba shot against Southeastern. Evan Stockton, Sam Day back with you. Stick, it's a lead for Roba shot at the break, 28 to 16. We're seeing a lot of highlights from that first half. As that half wore along, though, it was kind of like that. Roba shot and Walker and all that length was just giving Southeastern 
a lot of problems. Yeah, lots of turnovers led to lots of easy buckets for Robichaud. But, let, I mean, let's give credit where credit's due. Walker had completely taken over the game at that point, blocking shots, stepping into stealing lanes, getting his own hoops, step back jumpers. You see this take to the lane right there. Put it up right-handed. He's a lefty. I mean, what can't that guy do? And also, you got to point to the scoreboard. Obviously, that's where it's settled. Southeastern putting up four points in that second quarter. Going to be tough to win ball games like that, as we discussed during halftime. There's that scoreboard. Great job by Alex Westfall. You know, it's nice when the producer actually listens to what we're saying. I, I, I'm convinced he listens like 20% of the time. It's awesome that we get to lead him. <laughs> in all seriousness, Southeastern only those four points in the second quarter. Good start to the third quarter. Just a tough roll off for Carney. What can they do offensively to get some better luck, do you think? Well, that's it. They just did it. They went to the rim, and they got a better shot. They just didn't complete it. It looks like they're going with their bigs now with number 24, number 11 on the floor for Southeastern. So they're going to try to combat with a little bit more size than they had in the first half. Oh, by the way, Walker just made another basket for Robichaud. He now has 18 of their 30 points. Yeah, that's why I didn't even acknowledge it while it was happening. It's kind of <laughs> ho-hum at this point. <laughs> we know what you're thinking at home. We get it. He's good. Ooh, how about that? Good drive to the basket for Mitchell, but he missed the shot. Couple of good cracks at it for Southeastern. They just haven't made them down deep to start the half. Yeah, and a lazy pass right there. It's going to lead to an over and back. That's something we did not see in the first half, and that's what you got to fight against when you're in these types of games. When you're up by 14 points, fighting against that just human nature to kind of let off the gas pedal. Oh, check out the fans here. Fans, young and old, supporting Robichaud <laughs> here today. That's Eli, great. I love that. Eli was trying to show the name on the back. There it is. Walker's number one fan. She's had a lot to cheer for today. You know, with the way he's played today, Stick, I think he's going to gain a few more fans. Anyone watching this game is probably going, man, that Walker's pretty good. Who's he? I mean, he's going to be up for the G of the game, that's for sure. Carney just made a basket for Southeastern, got it down to 12. Way doubled. That means someone's got to be open. Walker's the open guy. My goodness, has he been good. Well, you see Southeastern switch to their zone saying, all right, you did it to us. Let us try to do it back to you. And they show you how to beat the zone. You move the ball, you get the defense going, and then you find that corner three. Here we go. Walker. Oh, no. That's the only thing that's gone wrong today. Oh, man, the rim was rude. And unfortunately for Walker, like that's going to be the thing he remembers out of this game. Not the 18 points or so that he's already put up. Not the block shots. He's going to remember that missed dunk. The poor guy's got 21 points. He's probably going to get 30 points. And yes, that's, if you played athletics, you know that's the one thing he's going to be thinking about. He's going to fall asleep tonight and think, I can't believe I missed that dunk. I can't believe it. Oh, I feel for him. That stinks. Liddell left alone. Southeastern's got to hit shots like that to get back in it. But once again, they broke the zone by getting the ball into the middle of it. The defense collapsed. They were able to kick it out. I thought they were a little too compact in the lane there with three guys, but ended up working for them. It's a couple of made threes for Julian Liddell, by the way. Seven points. Carney and Liddell have combined for 17 of Southeastern's 21 points. Well, Liddell came off the bench, too. I mean, they were really struggling until he came in the game. Blocked. Carney says no against Walker. And we've seen that a couple times in this game. Caldwell up the floor. His floater was short. Evans got it, though. Mitchell. Long rebound. Still battled for. Oh, boy. Yeah, Pedway threw it off of Mitchell, right? Yes. Yeah. There, the, it just took a little while for the official to register, and he saw it, but he, then he was like, oh, wait, that guy was out of bounds when the ball hit him. Well, the thing I'm thinking live watching it is Pedway, uh, he threw it into his face with some velocity. Uh, you know, game comes at you fast. <laughs> I mean, he threw it into his midsection, but still, that's a nice Bruce. What a great piece of camera work and replay work by our crew there, too. Seriously, the last couple of days, combination of the PSL Classic and the crews, there's been a lot going on. So thanks to everyone who's actually working hard behind the scenes, Stick. We just have the easy job, talk and look pretty, you know? Uh, and I don't even look pretty. Ha! 
I'm still trying. Petway floater a little off. Couple of stops in a row for Southeastern. Caldwell, nice little shot fake. Back inside, Evans, no good. And that's where his raw ability kind of gets away from, you know. That's a nice, easy layup. He should have just laid in off the backboard. Padway missed the three. Carney rebounded it. But you see the coach for Southeastern yelling, push, 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 because they know they got to get extra possessions out of this. Caldwell, rainbow three. Rebound, Mitchell. Caldwell, shot fake. Off the glass, he missed it. Long rebound, Clay. Duran Clay missed the layup. Some helter-skelter basketball going on right now. I mean, Southeastern's had a bunch of defensive stops in a row. If you're a Jungle Ear fan, you're probably sitting there and thinking, all right, we got to get some points now, boys. That'll help. That's Carney for two. And it seems like they have kind of solved this uh, defense a little bit. You know, they got to start making the shots, but they're getting much better looks at the hoop. Back down to a 10-point game. Just under three and a half to go, third quarter. Yeah, when in doubt, get it into Walker's hand, let him ISO. Steal. Liddell with the theft. Liddell missed the layup. That was a huge break, and the Roshaw coach was like, all right, I've had enough of this. Let's call a timeout and get us back on track because a couple lazy turnovers, a couple missed baskets. And next thing you know, the momentum's getting away from you. Take a look at us right now. We are everything that will be. We are an engine of progress that has been forged by generations, driven by the knowledge that each student in every classroom has the potential to be their best self and inspire us all. We are teachers, parents, families, all ready to do our part. We know when students rise, we all rise. We are Detroit Public Schools Community District. Lowering the shoulder. Swing and a miss. McGinley scores! Second game coming up in about an hour or so. The Cowboys from Detroit Western against Redford Union. That should be a really good game. Stick, obviously in this city, when you think of high school basketball, you're thinking of Cass because they won the title last year, both city and state. King's always good, Renaissance always good. Southeastern right now, given Robichaud problems. Excited to see Western later, that is a big roster. Robichaud on the other end, cannot buy a bucket. Feels like it's been forever since they scored, and unfortunately we got an injury. Malachi Moss is clutching his left leg, oh boy. Yeah, he went up for the shot and it looked like he came down a little funky on it, and you could tell he is in a lot of pain. Oh boy, we'll hit a break as they take Malachi off the floor. It stinks to see, can't put any weight on it. Hopefully some good news to tell you when we come on back. That was the quickest commercial break in the history of live television. <laughs> Luckily they got Moss off the floor pretty quickly. Steal for Southeastern. Stick, they're in this game after that layup from Mitchell. Well, you can see it coming out in the second half. They've gotten a little more confident against this zone, and now they're the ones that are forcing turnovers and getting some easy looks. You know, Robichaud, like we said, uh, human nature to try to pull back. They were given max effort in that second quarter. Now it doesn't look as they're going as hard. It's a 7-0 run for the Jungleers. Robichaud needs a bucket to give it to Walker. He just gave it to Petway. Man, that's a big bucket for Robichaud. Yeah, and silky smooth. We've mentioned it a couple of times. Silky smooth off that screen. But that's, once again, how you attack a zone defense. You know, Robichaud plays against it, I'm sure, a lot in practice. So they know how to attack it as well. 
Mitchell shot fake, nearly a steal, loose on the floor. Evans has got it and he's got two. And those are the hustle points that were going the other way in the first half. You can tell Southeastern has come out here with a different mission. Jungleers refusing to quit, a lot of time to go in this game. Clay to the cutter, down low, and two for Jenkins. And remember earlier in the game when we were talking about that baseline cutter, if he's looking, he's open against the zone. Like I said, Robichaud knows how to attack it, and they did exactly that. Liddell couldn't save it. Julian Liddell has had a tough last couple of minutes for Southeastern. But you can't question his effort there. You saw it in the first half. He got beaten to a ball by Walker. That time, he was not going to get beat to that ball. Oh, boy. That's going to be an extra couple of seconds in the ice bath. Petway off the glass and good. Marcus Petway now has 10. He's just so tough. He's got that big, thick body. He's tough to knock off his spot. Blink your eyes, and this is back up to a 12-point lead for Robichaud. Could be getting larger. Another steal. Petway leading the charge. Petway fouled by Evans. Yeah, that's a tough one-two combination when you're playing Robichaud between Petway and Walker. I mean, you got your nice guard play, and then you got your big man that can do it all. That's a, that's a nice one-two punch. Hard foul, by the way. Petway went up, and Evans brought him down. Cornelius Jenkins in the game too. He checked in a minute or so ago and kind of he's helped spark the team off the bench. It is interesting, right? Watching so many basketball games, the certain effort that guys bring off the bench. You may look at the stat sheet and see a guy off the bench only plays 12 minutes per game or whatever it is, but they can bring lots of effort. More effort on that play from Petway. He just got fouled again by Evans. Yeah, Evans, well, or er, was that Evans that fouled him? Yeah, the other Evans. I'm sorry, I'm getting them confused. There's two Evans on the court. Or there's a Walker and an Evans. My fault. Yeah, Evans, Evans definitely uh, is a force to be reckoned with down there. You saw him swat that ball. We talked about it earlier. He's a big, strong guy. All right now, Petway's got to start hitting some free throws. He's missed three in a row. Let's see if Marcus can knock this one down. There you go. Picking up the full court press. Carney breaks it with a pass that was fumbled by Goodwin and lost. But then a travel on a shot means it's jungle air basketball anyway. Yeah, he was able to pick it up, but then he started to run a little bit too soon before he decided to pass that ball. But you see Robichaud, whenever they're in a slump or slowing down, what do they do? They throw in a different press. They switch up their defense, and it kind of re-sparks their energy. Liddell inside, kicking outside. Southeastern's got to go here. There's five in the ticker. Liddell realizes it, gets it down low. Evans, yes, and one. That's the guy we were talking about, the difference maker. He is tough down low, and I'm not sure if they really have a matchup for him just because of his raw strength and size. If he can get that touch down low, he's going to be a very dangerous player. Azeron to Evans coming in with just 2.6 points per game, four rebounds per game. But Stick, you've called it out all day. You can see the potential in this dude for sure. And he just hit the free throw. That's seven points. Those guys are always scary to me. Clay got it off. Off to the fourth. Back down to a 10-point game. Southeastern hanging around, but Robichaud built that lead to a bunch in the third. What rhymes with great? Participate. Where does greatness start? Here, in the classroom. On the diamond. In the pool. On the field. Where will your greatness take you? To better grades. To more friends. Yeah! Be great. Yeah! 
Shoulder. Swing and a miss. McGinley scores! Southeastern coaching staff employing their boys to keep it going. You know, Stick, if you were watching that third quarter alongside us, you're probably sitting here going, should be like a 14-point Robichaud lead, right? It's only a 10-point game. Jungleers are in it. What can they do to get even further in it as we start the fourth quarter here? I mean, besides the obvious make shots, because that's one thing. They have had nice looks. They just haven't been able to knock them down and not turn the ball over. The turnovers that have been forced by Robichaud in this game has really propelled them to this 10-point lead. Brief delay here before we start the quarter. Got to mm -hmm. add eight minutes onto the clock. There we go. CJ Alexander over there. Hardest working man in Detroit this time of year. That's two for Clark. Shout out to everyone with the Detroit PSL. All the hard work they do all year and this time of year for sure. Putting on awesome events like this for us to enjoy and cover and call. Walker had it stolen. Carney has two. There you go. Still a 10 point game. And that's the turnover battle that needs to be won by Detroit Southeastern. They really haven't been able to speed up Robichaud until early here in this fourth quarter, and you never know what this could result into. Bulldogs forced to take a timeout. 30 seconds into the fourth quarter. We'll keep it here. 10-point game still. By the way, Lozell Carney, number 11 for Southeastern. Stick, he's quietly putting in a pretty good game. 14 points for the Jungleers. You can see the talent that they've got. And obviously, we've been able to see the talent all day for Robichaud. There's your record for Southeastern coming in at 4 and 2. Losses to Western and King. Wins over Livonia, Clarenceville, Denby, Detroit Leadership Academy, and Detroit Public Safety Academy. We were talking before about those runner up appearances, trips to the Class A title game not too long ago, 2011 and 2013. Enrollment of just about 600 students. High school founded in 1917. In case you missed it earlier, the reason their nickname is the Jungleers. When they built the high school, it was considered so far from the center of Detroit that it was out in the jungle, quote unquote. That's where the nickname comes from. Another unforced error for Robichaud. They just threw it away. Yeah, you're seeing it. That, that full court press has kind of sped them up and then just an uncharacteristic unforced turnover there. That was just a nice, easy chest pass that got away from him. Can Southeastern turn D into O? That is the question. Still so much time to go in this game. Yeah, but you'd like to see a little bit more urgency out of Southeastern. There is a lot of time, but they got to be pushing this basketball. Caldwell missed it, thought he got fouled, and it turns into another bucket for Walker on the other end of the floor. Yeah, Walker just decides to go one on three. No big deal. <laughs> He's going to take it down here into the post. He has scored 23 of Robichaud's 44 points. What a day. And he really hasn't been a selfish, dominant player in that aspect. It's kind of just the games come to him in that fashion, which is almost more dangerous. Jungleers trying to get some points back. Good ball movement on this trip. Mitchell, one more pass, and Goodwin's first basket. And that is what they've been looking for all game, moving that ball, not a lot of dribbles. And here they come with that full court press again. Walker getting doubled, ahead to Petway for two. Man, Walker is just so dangerous, being so big and being able to see the entire floor like that, finding Petway for the easy layup to break the press. Not many dudes who are that big can handle it and see the floor like you're talking about as well as he does. Yeah, a lot of those guys like to look down when they dribble. Caldwell, tough floater. Southeastern answers again. Jenkins for Petway. Blocked by Carney, who looked back at him as he blocked it. <laughs> I love that for Carney. 
Jungleers up the floor in a flash. Caldwell. Oh, man, it was halfway down and out. Now Robichaud getting up the floor. Jenkins for two. And there's been a couple of those moments where you feel Southeastern has that momentum and all they got to do is hit that big shot, but it just, it, the bubble's on the rim and they can't not come through in those big moments. I mean, that's a five-point swing there. The three's halfway down, it pops out. Robichaud right back up the floor. Could easily been a seven-point game. Mitchell looked around and realized he had a ton of space, so he just laid it in. <laughs> he's done that a couple of times. He's definitely a pass-first guy because he's had a couple shots that I thought were kind of easy. He's passed up. Jenkins wide open. That one was halfway down. Southeastern's got a pulse with four and a half to go. Coach Yellen got to go. Now they will go. Liddell prancing inside. Drop off Carney. That's two more. Yeah, Carney has silently impressed me in this game, too. A couple big blocks, some nice rebounds. And there you see him able to put the ball in the hoop and another unforced error. Well, I guess kind of forced because they're doing the press, but just a pass that's easily completed. There have been so many times in this game you think Coach Carter's Robichaud Bulldogs are going to put the gas pedal down and roar away. But the Jungleers haven't quit. And halfway into the fourth quarter, they are very much in this ballgame. Can they keep scoring buckets? No good. Rebound tapped out. Three ball. Jungleers down. Keyshawn Harden, five-point game. Walker couldn't save it. The Jungleers are alive. Yeah, I thought for sure Coach was going to call a timeout once it got down to five points, gather the troops, get them, but he, he decided to let Walker roll with it and an uncharacteristic turnover for his big man. Can Southeastern keep the momentum going? They have never led in this game. Liddell drew a foul on Walker. They want a continuation, but th this is not the NBA. They're not going to get it. <laughs> yeah, he was definitely on the floor. But you see Walker, I mean, how often do you see your big as the point on a zone like that? And he was able to get by him, though. Carney! Oh, my goodness, if that one goes in. Carney's made that shot before. There's the timeout by Robichaud. We'll take it with him. 3.17 to go. Hope you didn't turn this one off. It's a good one down the stretch in game one of the day from Renaissance High School. Lowering the shoulder. Swing and a miss. McGinley scores! And uh, it's going to be a challenge for us. I mean, they're a really talented football team. I think everybody knows that. Four wide receivers. Pressure steps up. Marshall wants to run again. Cuts down the middle of the field. All alone. Touchdown, Warriors. What a cut. Basketball's a funny sport, right? All of a sudden, you get some stops. All of a sudden, you hit some shots. And you're alive. Jungle Ears were down by 15 points in the second half. But after that hard and three, stick. They're alive, it's a five point game with just over three minutes to go. Yeah, and they were uh, another big three point shot away from only being down two points. So uh, Robichaud's playing with fire right now and Southeastern is kind of catching fire as we speak. Robichaud trapped, Petway, jump ball. The arrow means it's Southeastern basketball. And there you see just that extra effort and you know, kind of picking up with the press has sparked Southeastern to be a better ball club. They're just more engaged. Travel on the jungle ears. That is an unforced air. Yeah, and that's tough too. We've talked about it. They, they've had their chances, you know, right there being down five with the ball and something like that just comes up and bites you. Walker dribbling out of a double. Across the court, Clay, open three, not there. 
Rebound Liddell. How quickly do the Jungleers go? Keyshawn Harden feeling it. It is a two point game. Petway, Robichaud gets it to go. Plus one. And he has been the stopper all game long. Every time Southeastern has gone on a little run, that man right there, Petway, has taken it to the hoop. And he's had some issues at the free throw line, but he's able to turn this into a three point play. And that would be huge for this team right now. What a sequence. Harden hits that three to make it a two point game. Robichaud back up the floor to at least get two. Another missed free throw for Pedway. He's missed four today. Yeah, and it caused a lane violation because he knew when it left his hand, it was not going in, so he tried to rush to get there. Man. The next couple of games here at Renaissance High School are as good as this one. We'll be lucky. Robichaud has led from the start, but Southeastern has not gone away. And this game is firmly in doubt. Harden. He got fouled while shooting the three. That is a tough foul right there. We haven't really seen Harden at the, three, uh, the free throw line yet this game, so I'm not sure how he shoots from the stripe, but these three are very big shots. High pressure. The junior to the free throw line, Keyshawn Harden. Guy who's back from last year's team. Southeastern returns a lot of starters from last year's team. Harden will also run some track when the weather gets warmer. Although, let's be honest, the weather's been really nice the last couple. <laughs> I know it's rainy today, but when you're above freezing, a couple of days after Christmas, you don't complain in Detroit. Yeah, no, I was telling my seven-year-old, because she was all disappointed there was no snow during Christmas, but there was during Halloween. I'm like, well, welcome That's to right. Michigan, sweetheart. Sorry our ancestors didn't settle in Florida. Harden hit all three free throws. One point game. Pedway missed it, follow, no. Carney rebound, tipped out of bounds. Would you believe that Southeastern can take the lead on this possession? I mean, if we talked about he scored four points in a quarter. You really shouldn't be in any ball game, but here they are with the chance to take the lead with two minutes left. They were down by 15 points in the third quarter. Their coaching staff wants to talk about it. We'll take a quick break with them. Do not go anywhere. We got a ball game from Renaissance High. Southeastern trying to complete the comeback. Take a look at us right now. We are everything that will be. We are an engine of progress that has been forged by generations, driven by the knowledge that each student in every classroom has the potential to be their best self and inspire us all. We are teachers, parents, families, all ready to do our part. We know when students rise, we all rise. We are Detroit Public Schools Community District. No matter how this thing ends, you got to give a lot of credit to Detroit Southeastern. Down by double digits for essentially the entire third quarter. Came into the fourth quarter down 10, but now with just over two minutes to go, they've got the ball with a chance to take the lead. You see Robichaud go back into their man zone, little trap here. Almost a turnover. Out of bounds, still jungler ball. Yeah, you saw him last time down, put Cornelius Jenkins up at the top of that zone. This time they switch it out for Walker. A little more length, a little more athleticism at the top of the key. Into the backcourt with Caldwell. The senior guard had it stripped by Walker. It is still Southeastern ball. Robichaud has come this close the last couple of seconds to getting two different steals. Yeah, Southeastern just dodged a bullet there. Walker just hit it into Tolliver, and they knocked each other out from getting that easy layup. Liddell with space. Harden. This man is unconscious. Silly turnover off the inbound. Harden. If he made that shot, just close the gym down. Jump ball, Arrow keeps it with Robichaud. 
Keyshawn Harden, hello. And you know what I love about it? He didn't think about it. That's what we were talking about in the first half. They were thinking a little too much, letting the defense adjust. He got the ball, he shot it without conscience, and put his team in the lead by two. 14. And now you wonder where the heck Robichaud goes. Body blow after body blow. Still standing, still got a shot. Intercepted almost by Liddell. Now it's taken away by Harden. Bounce pass to Liddell. Missed the layup. Still being battled for. Down to the floor they go. Clay had it for Robichaud. And they just had to burn their last timeout. What a huge turn of events. And Liddell, he's missed a couple wide open layups. This one is really going to haunt him because this would have put him up four with about a minute left. And there you see, getting the timeout before the jump ball was called. Woo, some good action here at the end of this game. We were saying it all yesterday. These are the types of games where you learn a lot about teams early in the year. Beautiful pass. Just, oh, I think he was expecting contact, and he didn't get it because Clay was able to hold off there. And my goodness, Clay got back on that ball and called a timeout. But here, if you're Robichaud, you got to be drawing up a play for Walker or uh, Tolliver or Petway. Walker or Petway are my two guys on this play. Got to get the ball up the court. Walker has done a good job breaking the press because he's able to see over the smaller defenders. What a game to start our three-game extravaganza from Renaissance High School today. Western and Redford Union will play about 20 minutes after this one ends, whenever it ends. Play off the inbound finds Jenkins. Southeastern's defense swarming like a pack of jungleers. Jump ball, Southeastern basketball. Yeah, and Jenkins just kind of got caught holding the ball there, not making a quick decision. That's a That's been a common theme in the game, but he fakes the pass there, lets the defense close in on him. All he had to do was throw it back to Clay. How does Southeastern attack this possession? Liddell, downhill, no good. Big offensive rebound. When does Robichaud have to foul here? Because Southeastern doesn't have to score again. Walker just picked up the foul anyway. Oh, and that was close to being a clean pickpocket too. And he was off to the races, ready to go attempt another dunk. That was a big call by the official right there. But yeah, I mean, I'd say you, you still have about 25 seconds before you have to. You can start going for the steal, but around the 20 second mark is when you really got to go get him. Oh, what a out of bounds play. The tap is good for Harden. What a ridiculous fourth quarter. Turnover Robichaud, melting down the stretch. Yeah, they just haven't been able to get control during this press, and that's the one thing that has been their kryptonite in this game. Just look at the turnovers that have happened here in the fourth quarter. He's Sean Harden, 14 points in the fourth quarter. They just got it to him off the inbound. Robichaud, you'd think, has got a foul here soon. Jungleers are playing keep away. That's Walker's fifth foul, I believe. Well, Walker has definitely left it all out on the court tonight. But what a turn of events here at Renaissance. Now, the, the scores table is telling, trying to tell the officials that's five on Walker. And that's going to make it real tough to come back. Real classy by uh, Southeastern, giving him a round of applause because even they have to appreciate the effort from number one today. Walker was awesome. 23 points in the game, 14 in the first half alone. They brought Tolliver back on the floor to replace him. Timeout Southeastern, that's their last. Whew, got to catch your breath there. What a game, huh? I, I mean, uh, listen, I would not have expected that. If high school basketball, you could, you know, like, that in-game betting like they do for the pros, who would have bet <laughs> down 14 in the, in the third quarter when only scoring four points in the second that they would have been able to come back?
Stick, don't give anyone any ideas. Okay? Oh, I, listen, Someone's going to form a high school sports park. <laughs> I'm sure somebody already has one. I'm not uh, privy to it, but, yeah, I'm sure they don't have the live betting with 14 down in the third to come back like that. But, I mean, you got to give all the credit to one guy, really, and that's Harden. He, <laughs> two big three-pointers, three big uh, free throws at the line, single-handedly brought them back. Six-foot junior, Keyshawn Harden. That was your biggest shot of the game, to give them their first lead since it was 4-3. I made it 52-50 at the time. Harden runs some track in the spring. Returner from last year's Jungleer team that's trying to build off a season where they won a playoff game last year. This comeback is the type of game that breeds bigger success going forward. Clay forced to foul Mitchell. And here's the interesting thing about high school basketball this year. There used to be a one and one situation. That's no longer involved in high school basketball. When you're at the free throw line, you're shooting two. Yeah, in case you missed it, they adopted the rule that they use in women's college basketball where it's five fouls and then a double bonus. And also late in the game, you can get it to half court and inbound it, kind of like the NBA. That's what they've done in women's college basketball for six, seven years now. There's your schedule all day yesterday and two more games coming up. Western and Redford Union will start right around 4.15. And Renaissance and Roseville in the last game. Two missed free throws. And now I believe they got a foul on the Jungle Ears. And that is only the third team foul, so it'll be an inbound, not free throws. <laughs> the, uh, the Southeastern fans did not like what the officials just called there. I'd say what they said, but then they'd have to kick me off the air. Southeastern bench thinks it should be their ball. The officials are going to get together on this. I don't think any of them really had a good look at it. And they do not have replay. They do not get to look at the prep like everybody else. And it looks like a kick ball by Petway. There you go. They got the call right. Without replay. You got to hand it to these MHSAA officials. That's how you know they're good. They get it right, and they didn't even look at the replay. And look who's clapping. <laughs> the guy that was telling them how bad of a job he was doing <laughs> just 30 seconds ago. <laughs> I believe the direct quote was, you've been terrible all game. Apparently, he thinks they're great now. Now he's getting a standing O. <laughs> <laughs> Robichaud, you'd think, has got a foul here. I guess they're not going to. I guess the game's going to end. Wow, what a win for Southeastern. Came into the quarter down 10, came into the third quarter. At one point, they were down 15. What a win for the Jungleers. I mean, that's got to feel good. Now, now they can feel like they can compete against anybody, and no matter where they're at in the game, they can hold their own. What a competitive game by both sides. Got to see some impressive basketball. Final score, Southeastern 54. Robichaud 50. We coming back with highlights? I believe we're coming back with highlights in the G of the game stick. So don't go anywhere just yet, everybody. We're back in a minute. From an ordinary idea comes a great journey. It all starts with the simple thought, a vision of something bigger, greater than what already exists. It's that spark that ignites the passion and drive to create something truly amazing. At G Brand, we understand this journey well. We take pride in the details and perfecting every aspect of the process, regardless of how small or big they may be. Because it's more than just a design or a shirt. It's about outfitting future champions. There's something to be said about a team coming together, each member contributing their unique skills, talents, and ideas. It's that collective effort that takes a simple idea and turns it into something truly great. The process can be excruciating, with countless hours spent tirelessly reviewing every detail. But the end result is pure and so rewarding, knowing that we've created something that will inspire greatness in those who wear it. Whether they come from a savage land or a booming metropolis, whether their numbers are two or two billion, the greatest their numbers could ever become is truly to become one. That's why at G-Brand, 
We're more than just a clothing company. We're a movement, a community of like-minded individuals who believe in the power of coming together to make a difference. So join us on this journey as we strive to outfit future champions and inspire greatness in all that we do. G-Brand, now that's game. All right. Can't hear anything. We're back at Renaissance High School, where our G of the game is Keyshawn Harden, who was ridiculous in the fourth quarter. You just scored 14 points in the fourth quarter alone. You hit like four threes. What in the heck just happened? Uh, we clicked on. I just didn't want to lose. And my team got me going. They kept me up, kept me motivated. You talk about your team not losing. You were down by 15 points in the third quarter. 10 points down going into the fourth quarter. You end up winning. What does a win like this say about your team, how you came back and won today? That we, that we always keep up. We don't, really, we don't really worry about the score. If we up 15, we still act like we're down 15, so it really doesn't matter. And then going forward, I mean, focusing in Detroit basketball, right? Cass mm -hmm. is always good. King's always good. Western, all of these teams. But what do you think people know about Southeastern basketball after today and, and this comeback win? That we come, and our coach always say that we come to sit at the big boy table. So, you know, just keep on working, get back to practice, fix up all the little things that we messed up on and everything. So we're going to be good. Look, it's the holiday season. We're all trying to sit at the big boy table. The junk over here sat at the big boy table. That's awesome. Keyshawn Harden, appreciate it, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for joining us today. That was a heck of a game. Jungleers beat the Robichaud Bulldogs in an awesome basketball game. First out of three today from Renaissance High School. Next one coming up in about 20 minutes. Western and Redford Union. We'll talk to you then. Thank you.